Hi, everyone. This is Coach Ulysses. I'm coming back to you for the second video of how to play chess. I hope you were able to practice and got something out of the last lesson. We're going to move further into the lesson today, and we're going to work on the pawns. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, this is how the board is set up normal and a normal situation for a game, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the pieces off. And let's take a look at the pawns here. Now, today's title of the lesson is Pawns and Their Useful Function. Pawns and Their Useful Function. OK, uh, so um, in the first video, we talked about how the pawns moved and how they captured other pieces. I'll do a brief review over that today, but I want you to also know that pawns are used to stake a claim on the board in an area of the board, uh, whether it's the queen side of the board or the king side of the board. Everything to the right of the king is the king side of the board, and everything to the left of the queen is the queen side of the board. So the board is divided down the middle. But we want to talk about the pawn's function and how it can benefit your game. Okay, so pawns can protect pieces. They can protect pieces, and they support each other. They are not great working independent. They need support of another pawn or piece. So let's say I was to move this pawn that is on the D file, move it forward. I decided to move it forward two spaces. Let's say my opponent decide to immediately attack my pawn here that's on D4. And they moved their pawn on e7 to e5. Now, like as in the first video, we learned that any time a pawn or another piece moves diagonal to another pawn, that's how the pawns can capture. So, normally I could just capture this pawn, replace the pawn that I just captured with my, my pawn, and it would be out of the game. But for the example I would like to show you, let's say there's a particular position on the board and I don't want to capture that pawn. What if I don't want to capture that pawn? Well, there's two things I can do. I go back to where my other pawns are because now it's my move and I could either push this pawn on the C file, the C2 pawn, to C3. And now my pawn has support. So that if the black pawn decided to take my pawn with their move, now it's my turn, now I can come back and capture the pawn that just captured my pawn. And that's how pawns support one another. They don't work great independent. Always remember that. You want your pawns to connect. You want your pawns to work together. And you will get the best use and the best function out of them. Okay. So move my pawns back. Let's say I move here. My opponent moved directly in front of my pawn, blocked. His pawn is blocked, my pawn. His or her pawn are blocked in this instance. Okay, show you another way. Uh, how about if I moved this pawn here, right? Well, my opponent might say, you know what? I could take his his or her pawn, I could take that pawn, 
I could take my opponent's pawn, but I want to protect that pawn. I want that pawn to stay there and I want to protect it. So my opponent could either move this pawn diagonal, right? Move it up one and it would be diagonal to the other pawn, which showing that it's supporting it. So if this pawn captures this pawn, now this pawn behind it captures the pawn in the beginning of the capturing sequence, okay? All right, so you don't have to capture pawns, but sometimes you need to capture a pawn because it, as it marches down the board, it can become dangerous because it is taking space. It is staking a claim on the board and it would love to block your opponent's pieces from their full potential. And that's what pawns are used for. Pawns are used in a game of chess to restrict the movement of your opponent's pieces and to gain ground on the board so that your pieces move freely and unhindered and that your opponent's pieces find themselves cluttered, okay? So, that being said, now I wanna show you, I'll take a couple of pawns, I'll take a few of these pawns off. Say we have a pawn here, two pawns here. Now, I have, black has three pawns and I have two. There's going to be a little bit of a scrimmish or a little battle, excuse me, a, a little battle in the board with amongst these couple of pawns. And if I had to ask you a question, who's gonna win that battle? Who do you think would win that battle? I think you would automatically say, the black pawns would win that battle because there's three against two. You are absolutely correct, okay? So let's say, even if it was, let's say it was my turn to move. So I move here. This pawn could capture my pawn that I just moved forward, or this pawn could capture my pawn that I just moved forward, okay? So in this, particular illustration, the black pawns, two black pawns have a choice which one they want to capture. You have a choice which one you want to capture, right? So this pawn could come over, capture my pawn, right? Then my pawn is out of the game. Then if I was to capture that pawn, I take his pawn out of the game, and now my opponent could either capture my pawn or move forward. If my opponent decided to capture my pawn, now my opponent has something what we call doubled pawns, okay? Now, double pawns are usually not a good idea. There are only a couple of um, examples, only a couple of instances in a chess game where doubled pawns can work to your favor, but um, they usually do not work to your favor. Uh, they destroy your pawn structure because you got two pawns in front of each other and they're not working together. They're just not working together at all, okay? Now, if these two pawns are working, uh, uh, a doubled up pawns in the center of the board and they were protected by other pawns, the possibility they could be a little stronger than what they are right now. We like to call these pawn islands, pawn islands, okay? And, uh, you know, you, you just don't want this set up, especially in the end game, um, where they can be easily uh, picked off by other pieces, okay? Now I would like to show you how, uh, the, one of the functions of the pawn is how it protects pieces. Let's say I have a pawn here and I have a bishop. 
here. Okay, now my pawn, because my pawn normally and normally it can capture anything diagonal to it, this pawn can't capture its own piece. So what happens now is this pawn is now protecting this bishop. If anything was to come and capture this bishop, the pawn would take its place where the bishop sits because that's how it captures. That's how it would counter attack and counter attack, uh, capture, excuse me. So I'll put a rook on the board just to, to give you an idea of what we're talking about here. Now, rooks move side, side, side to side and forward. They don't move through pieces. They move side to side and forward, never diagonal. They can't capture anything on a diagonal. They can only capture and use its authority from side to side and forward. And we'll go and we will look at the movement of the rook soon, okay? So let's say it's your turn and you're playing the black pieces. If you were to capture this bishop, which would not be in a good idea, unless you have a concrete plan that is going to better your game or possibly get you into a position where you can checkmate your opponent. This rook coming here and capturing this bishop finds out that a pawn was protecting it. Now, you see that? Anything that comes diagonal to a pawn, because now it's my turn, you can capture it. So my pawn now can capture the rook. The rook has a value of five. The rook has a value of five. It's called the heavy piece. The queen is called the heavy piece, okay? So rooks are important. They are important. They're more important than a pawn, okay? So we see that in this situation, if it was your turn and your rook took this bishop, it's not a good idea because now my pawn has a value of one and now I get to take your rook, which has a value of five. And now from this position, I still can move forward one space at a time, okay? Because I'm way off of the starting gate that what we talked about in the first video, okay? I'll show you another example. Let's say, Let's use it right here. Let's use my queen. Okay, let's say you're playing the black pieces here. You're playing the black pieces. And my queen, which is the most powerful piece on the board, your queen is the most powerful piece. It has a value of nine. Nine points. It has a value of nine points, okay? Let's say, for instance, I made a silly move. And I came over and captured this knight. Guess what? You already know. Your pawn now can capture my queen. Believe me, when you're playing chess, there is only one other joy than, than, that's better than checkmate. And that is taking your opponent's queen off the board. Say, bye-bye, queen. It's all over. Nada. 
gone by. <laughs> All right. So, and which greatly increases your chance of winning because now you own your opponent's most powerful piece and it's not on the board. Okay. And you still might be on the board. All right. So you can really start playing aggressive. Okay. Uh, let's show another example. Notice, my this is the pawn that's protecting this pawn, all right? So if this queen was to come, take that pawn, now I can capture the queen, okay? Now I'll show you something, how a pawn can have, many times in a game, a pawn can have the the flexibility and the choice of what direction it wants to uh, capture in. So how about we have a rook here and a knight here. If I was to push this pawn forward, now you see that I have that I've I have a fork attack. We call this a fork attack because my pawn is attacking the knight and the rook at the same time. So you can only make one move. So who's ever playing the black pieces, they would have to decide which piece they want to lose. Okay, it's not pleasant, okay? but. It happens in a game of chess because there's a lot of clashes in chess. Lots of pieces coming off the board all the time. All right. And this happens to you. This can happen to you. Two pieces apart from each other, space in between. Your opponent's move. He moves forward. He loves this. He or she loves doing this because uh, there's not much you can do to get these two pieces out of danger. There's only one way, but I'll have to show you. That's more in advance um, in another video. That's going to be further down the road, okay? But, so, we call this a fork attack. The knight is being attacked diagonally here, and the rook is being attacked diagonally here. So, knowing that you know that your rook is more valuable than your knight, and it is, because the knights, knights and bishops are um, worth, they have a value of three and your rook has a value of five, you would want to move your rook away, okay? So you could do something like this, move to the side, all right? So that now it's my turn, now I can decide to take that knight. Most likely, I'm gonna take that knight. Most likely your opponent's going to take that knight, right? Take it. So now it's Black's turn, and Black used a smart move by moving just to the side because he knew that that pawn was going to wind up on this row, right, on the sixth rank. And I took the knight. Now, counterplay. The rook comes over and takes my pawn and now is threatening to take the pawn that's in front of it because it doesn't have anything protecting it, okay? Show you another example. Let's do a king. You know what? A king here. Okay, beautiful. Okay. I probably will turn the board around so you could see this too. Let's say
You're playing the black pieces, and it's your turn. The pawn on the D file can move up two spaces because it's still on the starting gate. This pawn has never moved. That tells you that this pawn has never moved, so it can still advance two squares. It can advance one or two. Here, well, we'll give the we'll give White a king here. Okay, here, and you know what? Let's give uh, White another piece. Black another piece. Excuse me. Let's do that. Oh, no, not that. How about a how about a knight? Okay, how about a knight? Let's give it a knight. Okay, so now we have a situation. You're playing the black pieces, and you always in chess you're thinking strategically. Always thinking strategically. All right, and it's your turn. You can advance this pawn up two squares, and now you got that fork attack. Your pawn is attacking the knight and the queen at the same time. So the queen would move out of the way and the queen purposely moves here because he knows that this pawn is gonna wind up on the C file because this pawn is gonna capture the knight because it's direct, directly diagonal to it. So that's how you make counterplay and you are able to recapture your opponent's pieces by making sure if you have no other choice but to move somewhere, that you move into a square that you can re-attack your opponent's piece, okay? So now, Blackwood, capture this pawn, um, this knight, excuse me, capture this knight, and now the queen would recapture the pawn, could, re, could recapture the pawn, all right? And put the king in check, but we'll get there, okay? This would be check, all right? Anytime your king is in check, you have to move it out, but we will get there, okay? All right. Now, one other thing I wanna share with you real quickly is en passant. It's a special move. It's called en passant. It is spelled E-N-P-A-S-S-A-N-T, en passant. It's French for in passing, okay? So let me show you what happens in en passant, and that will probably be our lesson for today, okay? I'm going to move through this rather quickly, but I will slow down to show you what opposite is about. Okay. If you can use the pawns to use the pawns well, you can become a very strong chess player by using pawns to your advantage. All right. They are a resource. You use all your pieces. They, all your pieces are a resource. Okay, so let's say I decided to move this pawn here. And my opponent decided to move for some odd reason. Just, you know, it doesn't matter. Move this pawn, his uh, E pawn up to E6. Okay. And now I decide to move this pawn again. All right. Now I decided he or she decided to move their pawn there. Now, now I'm gonna show you what the special move called en passant is. Now, if you're playing the black pieces and you happened to move this pawn two squares forward, one, two, your opponent can now take their pawn, move into that pocket that was created, and take this pawn off 
the board. I'll do it again. This pawn moves up twice. Now, I'll show you why this happens. This pawn, if you move the, your pawn here, past this pawn's normal ability to capture you, you can use the rule of ampersand. You can only use that rule when it happens. You can't make another move and then come back to it and then say, okay, I'm going to now take your pawn. Can't do that. They changed the rules. The game of chess evolved over many years, adding and taking away certain things. So what they said was this pawn is actually getting away with not stopping here, but moving forward. So they gave the opponent the right to take the pawn this way, still diagonal, pawn moving diagonal there, and then capture the pawn that moved past it. That's why it's called in passing, okay? I'll show you another example. Okay, let's say I'm just going to set something up here. No rhyme or reason to it. I'm just setting it up. Okay. Okay. Take a look at your pawn here, the black pawn here. Now, if I decide to move up two spaces here and bypass this pawn's natural ability to capture me. This would be the natural ability for it to capture me. If I moved here once, its natural ability to capture me would be right here. That would be their move, okay? Right, that would be your move. You take my pawn. So if I decide to move my pawn up two spaces and bypass, your natural ability to capture me, then now your pawn can drop into that pocket and then take my pawn off the board. Okay, see that? Now, now it's my turn. So now I can either capture your pawn or I could move it forward if I want to. I could capture this pawn, which I most likely will because you captured my pawn. So in chess, if your opponent captures something of yours, you want to always be able to capture something of your opponent's, okay? So now I would take, all right? Show you on this side of the board. Let's say this pawn was on the fifth, the fourth rank here, all right? This is your pawn. Let's just say, for instance, it was here. I, I just put it there. It's not, I moved it. I just put it there, okay? Same thing here. If I push my pawn... Pass your, your uh, pawn's natural ability to capture me. You have to immediately decide whether you want to take this pawn. Because if you make a different move, and then you think you can come back to this pawn and then take it later, you can't. Okay? You give up your privilege for ampersand. Ampersand has to be done immediately. Okay? So I move past your pawn's natural ability to capture me, and now your pawn hops right into that pocket right directly behind mine, and now you can take my pawn away. And that is ampersand. I can show you again. Let's do it this way.
How about this? Let's say it's my move. And I say, okay, I'm going to move this fo pawn forward two spaces. One, two. I just passed your pawn's natural ability to capture mine. And so now this pawn can fit right in that little pocket behind it. And now you can take my pawn. Okay. All right. I believe we'll stop there. We will get back to pawns, but I would like to teach you in the next video how some of these pieces move. So the next video will be on how um, the rooks move, how the queen moves, how the king moves, how the bishop moves. Um, we'll move forward with those pieces um, and we'll go from there. But in the meantime, you can practice if you have somebody um, in your home that would be interested in playing chess, you can practice with them. You can practice these uh, uh, pawn games that uh, that we talked about and uh, and see how you, you make out using the video um, if you, you need to refer back to it. I just would like to say to you that I have two excellent books, two excellent books I would like to show you. This was my first chess book. It's Bobby Fisher Teaches Chess. Little small paperback book, inexpensive. It's probably, actually, it's under 10 bucks. All right. Uh, you can find this online and uh, uh, just uh, Google chess books, Bobby Fisher Teaches Chess. It'll be there. Um, this is an excellent beginner chess book. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Now, my next book is, wow, it's an ama another amazing book, right? And it just really breaks down everything. Chess for Dummies. <laughs> Chess for Dummies. This is like your textbook for learning how to play chess. I highly recommend it. I still refer to this book. Um, and uh, I just want to say it's a great book. All right, that's it for today. I hope you are uh, staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy uh, without, with what's going on now with the coronavirus. Um, social distancing is um, a great way to help us all, and uh, I hope that you're, you're healthy and well. OK, so practice what we taught today, what I taught you today, and I will see you on video three. We're coming to you from Rogers Memorial Library in Southampton, New York, Rogers Memorial Library. All right. Have a great day.